Welcome to another edition of Team Drug. Yeah. How are you doing? Tell your friends to tell your friends to tell their friends that Team Drug is live now. It is time for us to begin. Yeah, who is excited with me? Mm -hmm. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about something very interesting. Very, very interesting. I'm sure you've seen the adverts, I'm sure you've seen the flyers, I'm sure your friends have told you about it. Today we're talking about what's in your hand, starting and growing a business using what you have. So, you guys, today is going to be lit, like completely and totally lit. And with us joining us is going to be a phenomenal, amazing woman. Hey, you guys, you guys don't know what, 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 what you guys are going to get, like, it's... Okay, so today we're having anti Henrietta, but before we start, please tell everybody to come online. Like, before we start, go and start calling all your friends, call everywhere, for everybody from everywhere to come and join us. We're, we're talking to anti Henrietta today, and... I just want you guys to get your pen, get your paper, get everything so that you can gain a whole lot from this. Now, let me add her to the call. So we're waiting for her and Terry to also join us. Yay, I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited as well. I am very excited. So let's just wait for her. You guys can be sending your questions as the session is going on so that we can see what's up. Yay! Hi, Auntie Angela! Good afternoon, Ma. Wow, I'm super excited to be here. Wow! <laughs> I'm excited as well. that everything's fine, all right? Okay, well, no problem. <laughs> it's very fine. So I introduced myself before. My name is Iyolua Olivia, and with me is Antares. Please, Ma, introduce yourself to us. Hmm, okay. Let me start by saying that, hmm. Well, I'm Henrietta Olupo Mite, Mi Chope, Tinua De, Anike, Omobole, Achake, Agola. I always, I always like to reel out the name. So, you know, I'm not, I don't just have one name. You know, some people just have one name. Yeah. You have many names. <laughs> mm -hmm. If anybody can reel out those names, I have a gift. I have a gift mm. for them. <laughs> 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 All right. So, basically, um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a business coach. You know, okay. I, I'm a business strategist. I'm a business automation expert and business possibility coach. Yes, I'm a tech entrepreneur, and um, I have interest in areas of app building, digital marketing, all manner of skills that have to do with tech. Yes. And I always still love being called the queen of fashion education in Nigeria. I mean, I oh. love that title. I love that title. So I'm the queen of fashion education in Nigeria. So we're the pace that, right? Yeah. All right, so I'm the CEO of Health of Henry Limited. You know, and we have seven things of businesses under us. Yes. Yes, ma. That's wonderful. That's really wonderful. It's great to meet you, ma. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so today we're talking about what's in your hand, starting and growing a business using what, what you have. And we know that you're an expert in it. I mean, to have seven things of business, of business is under one of our mama, the mama, you know. <laughs> so we're going to start now. Um, ma, I want to ask the first question is, what is a business? And in starting one, should teenagers, should people go with their gifts and their talents, or should they go with what's in vogue, like what's free, really, what they see really need money? Wow. Hmm. That's a very interesting question. Let's start with what a business is or what entrepreneurship is. But see, a lot of us want to be our own bosses, right? A lot of us yeah. want to ditch our bosses and say, man, I want to be my own boss. But you know, you don't even know the meaning of what business is all about, right? Yes. So I'll start with what business is all about. Business is any activity, any organized activity that a person, you know, a group of people get engaged with that leads to profit. 
All right. So the key word I want everybody to remember is the word prophet. Prophet. Mm. Prophet. Mm. We're not talking about you know doing your passion, just your passion. We're not just talking about that, but talking about making money, making yeah. profit. I make money without making profit, right? But yeah. we're talking about profit. And the key word is profitability. And people ask, what is profitability? Profitability is simply, you know, the degree to which anybody on an organization or anybody engages in an activity and it yields financial gain. Because the biggest income in life and business is income minus expenses equals to profit. Mm. So we must always remember that. When you're talking about business or entrepreneurship, we're talking about any activity whatsoever that you're engaging in to lead to profit. So now, to your second question, should we talk about talent? Should we talk about gifts? Should we talk about what are we talking about here? Now, I understand the place of talent because there's a gift in you. God has deposited something inside of you. You have brilliance to share with the world because God has, there's no one that's an empty barrel. Nobody's an empty barrel. We have something special about us because we are stars. We want God gives you an instruction and you do it, you become a star. So everybody has a, a gift, a talent, a potential within them. But when it comes to start a business, hmm. the key point is what is the market telling you? Hmm. What is the market saying? What are they yeah. telling you? What is, what, is, what is the market demanding of you? Hmm. So you can have your skills. You can have all those lovely things. You can have your passion. You can even say you want to do a passion project. I have passion projects. But my dear, remember that passion does not pay the bills. Yeah. If anybody can say that, passion does not pay the bills. You can be passionate about something. I have passion projects, man, that I do. And I say, yeah, this one, this one doesn't make money, but I, this one is impact. You can give impact. But when you're talking about business, you must talk about market. What is the market asking? And when we talk about the market, we're talking about what, because people forget that entrepreneurship or business is about filling needs or solving problems. Mm. You need to or solving a problem. So what is the problem that you are, you know, solving? So when you can come up with a solution for that problem, you're in business. Because business and making money is just an exchange of value. You give value and then you get money in return. You give value and you get money in return. So it's important. I understand the place of your gifts, your talents, because you should do work in the area of the law. What, what is competent, what you have, have competence about, what you're in love with, what is in line with your values, your ideals. I agree with that 100%. But is it a money making machine? Think about that. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much. So every business, you must make profit. If there's no profit, there's no business. Because that's yeah, a hobby. And you have to be a problem. <laughs> you said? I said that you also have to be solving your problem. So, that's that. correct. So, okay, I've heard a lot of Christians say that um, they haven't started a business yet because they haven't heard from God, because, you know, you know, they are still waiting. I, I, I've seen many very talented people who have, they have gifts, they have become so problem, but they're like, they're still waiting on God to hear what you have to say about whether they should start or not start. What do you think about this, Matthew? Do we have to wait for God to tell us, oh yeah, it's time to go ahead, though? Or should we just, like, go with the flow, go with what we feel in our gut, or, you know? Wow. Now, the place of prayer can never be underemphasized. Hmm. And you can never overemphasize it. I mean, we're all Christians, or we're practically Christians, we're talking about, we have to know what God is saying for time. The Bible says that the men of Issachar understood the times and they knew what they ought to do for time. So there's a place for getting counsel, wisdom, and inspiration from God. And we must never downplay that fact. So of course, mm. we must start with the independence. Ask God. Ask him, what do, you, what do you want me to do? What is your, yeah. what is your desire, plan, your purpose for my life? What should I do? I want to embark on this project. What should I do? Mm. Now, after you've done that, and you've gotten some form of conviction. Because people are waiting for an angel to come and say, yes, my daughter, it's time to yes. arrive. <laughs> no, you can wait for forever. Yes. Yeah, what I tell you that many ways that God speaks to you. Mm -hmm. If there's something that has been disrupted in your heart and you are convinced about it, please take steps. Okay. Take steps towards that light. Once you, once you don't have any reservations in your heart, 
when there's nothing that is holding you back, once you feel like, once you're excited about the idea, that's a way that God can be telling you, go ahead, my dear, go ahead. Now, you may be saying, what if I go ahead and I fail, sweetheart? Failure is part of the process. The only problem is I don't stay, don't stay a failure. Fail mm-hmm. fast and fail forward. Fail fast and fail forward. Because look, learning, failing, falling, it's part of the entrepreneurial process. Mm-hmm. I tell people that, look, entrepreneurship is a jungle. But it's mm-hmm. a jungle of, a jungle of greatness. I mean, we enter that, that a jungle wanting to catch elephants. We all want to catch elephants, right? We yeah. always want to catch to have enough meat to share around, yeah. to share the goodies you're talking about. But sometimes, you can enter that jungle and catch an ant. You can catch a snake. You can catch an antelope. An antelope. But in all of that, we are always learning, mm-hmm. unlearning and relearning. Remember mm-hmm. that learning never stops. You keep on learning, relearning, and unlearning. Because mm-hmm. if you're not, I feel like in the Bible, I mean, the poor man or the lazy man say, there's a lion in the street. I can't go out. There's a lion in the street, my dear. Go out. Let that lion bark or, or roar at you. Face yes. the fear. Yes. Die to death. This is what I'm talking about. Go ahead. First thing first, when you get an instruction from God, take baby steps towards achieving it. In the process, there could be times of waiting. There could be times of, of, of uncertainty. There could be times of even failure. You know, the truth of the matter is, a lot of times, people see entrepreneurs and they don't know. They say, wow, they're making it. Man, you're you're seeing the things. They're seeing the glory behind the story. (laughs) You don't know. You don't know what is happening. You don't know. (laughs) You know, we see a lot of what happens. But we don't know there's a lot of things that never work. So if God gives you, you know, that instruction, go ahead. Take baby steps. And you will see Mm. Thank you very much. Yeah. Don't wait. Take your steps. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, okay, in, in, in fighting that fear, are there certain steps like people should take to fight that fear or just get out as you, as you get out and start doing it? Do you You know, so. wow, I like that question. Fear in itself is good. Mm-hmm. Most times we always see the cup half empty. Mm-hmm. We don't we do understand that fear pushes us to do a lot of things. Yeah. When you don't have a choice, you get out there and do what you got to do. Jonathan, when you don't have a choice, you, you fear the fear. And you brave it. You understand? So what are my own steps I would tell people that when you have something, I mean, when you're about doing something and that thing doesn't scare you, it's in your zone of genius now, you can do it. It's not a big goal. If it doesn't scare you, it's not a big goal. Do you understand? Mm. But in mm. life, if it doesn't scare you, you have to do it. And you're scared and you're a bit happy and you're wondering, God, am I going to fail? Am I going to make it? First of all, have a positive attitude to life. Mm. See the cup have okay? When you see the cup half full, you will see the silver lining in the clouds, and you'll be able to take that first step. When you take that first step, my dear, you will take the next step. You will keep on moving in spite of the fear. You will keep on moving in spite of the fear. Because fear doesn't ever stop. Yeah. Because look, there are always bigger giants to kill. There are always bigger giants to kill. You make a millionaire today, you want to make 10 million. You make 10 millionaire today, you want to make 100 million. You make 100 millionaire today, you want to make one billion. You make one billion, you want to make what? One billion. What are we talking about? So face the fear, man. Face the fear. Go get it. Face the fear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so um, what, ste- what are the steps to take in starting, managing, and uh, marketing a business? Okay. That's a good question. Hmm. All right. Now, let's get back to business school. What do they tell us in business school? I've been to many business schools. I've been to many business schools. <laughs> I need to do market research. So let me get into some technicalities. You need to do market research. Okay. Be sure that that business is viable. 
do a survey if you have to do a survey. And you have friends, you have your, your audience that you can actually survey and ask whether they will pay for it. Because you see, you don't want to go into something that people will not pay for. Yeah? Let's take a good look at the maximum hierarchy of needs. You know I'm a psychologist. That was, that's what I studied in the University oh, of Lake. Yeah. And I use it every day. <laughs> Even though I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a, a conventional psychologist. I'm a spiritual psychologist. <laughs> okay. All right. So, okay. <laughs> you know, so let's take a look at the three, the, 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 the maximum hierarchy of needs. We're talking about the physiological needs. We have to do with what? Feeding, clothing, and shelter. Those are the basic needs. Now, whatever yeah. you're doing, there are other needs. There's social needs. There's safety needs. There's um, self-actualization needs. All of these things. You must be doing something in the line of all these needs that you can feel in it. So if it's an audience that are ready to pay for your service, you start with that. That's a, that's a viable idea. When you do some, some, uh, some um, what I call it now, some market research, you can also use Google to check. Use okay. Google to check. Yes, type in that particular idea that comes to your mind. If okay. you don't see many then that means it's not a very viable business. If oh. you see maybe results that are very scanty, that means you want to be a lone ranger in that business and you're not sure it will, it will work. So people are always scared of competition. Where there's competition, that shows it's a healthy market. It shows mm. that people are they, buying things in that market. They are buying in that zone. Because if there are not a lot of people there, then people are not buying because people will be coming out of that business. Do you understand mm. my point? Now, yes. I'm focusing on that business right now. I'm just talking about generally. Do your search. Be sure that people are buying in that business. Now, when you are sure that this is viable, you need to validate the idea. Mm. And how do you validate? Start small. Test the market. Start small. Don't take a whole lorry load of money and pour it into something you have not tested. It yeah. never works. In fact, the way you carry that money in, I thought it would just run out because you have not tested the market. You have not seen whether people will buy. So when you test a little bit and people buy, do you get my point? In fact, yes, buy and sell before you even begin to have the... If you're buying, maybe you want to buy and sell something, for instance. Let's say maybe you want to sell physical products, for instance. And mm -hmm. you want to sell on Jumia, you want to sell on Konga, you want to sell from your own website. I'm just using the scenario that we have right now because, because of social distancing right now, people are ordering things online, right? So you can put up a picture even before you order for it. Put up, put up the pictures. Let's see whether people will even say they want to buy it. Mm -hmm. If they order for it, man, they're going, that's going to light a fire under you and you're going to get it done. When people start saying, I want to buy this and they pay for it, then mm -hmm. it will light a fire under you and start your business. But if you don't test the idea, you'll find that I could fall flat. But don't forget that falling flat is part of the process. Yeah. You, can, you can see a viable business, my dear, mm -hmm. and your experience may not be very nice. But remember mm -hmm. that you are in the university of life. And in the university of life, you keep on learning every mm -hmm. day. So mm -hmm. what you have just done is you have learned what not to do next time. Yeah. When you're in the university of life and something fails, you have learned what not to do next time. All right. Yeah. So that is that. I told you that the preparative ground. Now, of course, for you to start a business, when you have tested the market, you have gotten the idea that people are going to buy from you, then you need to set up shop. Now, setting up shop has to do with, you know, registering a business, ensuring that you obey the entity, you know, concept where you separate yourself from your business. At least create a business identity for your business. Okay. Now, I, know, I know a lot of us, to this uh, broadcast, it may sound a bit technical, and the teenagers are saying, oh, can I register a business? Yes, you can register a business. And it doesn't take so much. It can start with a business name. The whole idea is that you're putting structure in your business, you're trying to create a separate entity from yourself. And when you've been able to register that business, I don't think it takes more than ten to 15000 you know, to do that. Let me tell you the, 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 the damage. Of, what is, is this the damage? I'm trying to remember the English. You Sorry, follow me on English. I can't remember. The problem about not registering your business, this has happened to me live and direct, all right? Oh, okay. long ago, when it started, years, until about 2001, 2002, I was using a name, a particular name, without registering it, and it became popular. By the time I was ready to register this business, my dear, that name was taken. I had oh. to reorganize. Yes, that name was taken, and it was very painful. I've already done a whole lot of flyers, a whole lot of brochures, everything. Oh. Even till today, people still search results. They still call us that name. I'm telling you. But we couldn't register oh. that name. Why? Yeah. Because we need to first. 
you get my point? So always plan that you, of course, when you register your business, you can create a business account and begin to sell. Create an online presence. I don't think this is the space to say so many other things, but just start with those first few things. Check okay. the market, do your market analysis, your SWOT analysis, you know, your feasibility research. Be sure that people will buy from you and then you hit it hard. Okay, man. So, so that's for starting it. And um, what about when it comes to, you know, when you started it, when it comes to managing it and marketing it for people to see, what, what do you do? What do you have to okay. do? Okay, so now let's talk about the management and the marketing. Now, depending on the kind of business that you run, you might definitely start out as a one-man show. But yes. always desire, begin to um, drop it for other people to do. That is in the long run because... When you're talking about a business, if you have a business plan, now I'm not talking about something very elaborate. I'm talking about some little guide that guides you on what you want to do in your business. That is a written document. A written document that gives you, that's like a blueprint that guides you on what you want to do, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when I talk about that little document, there are some things that are very important in that document. Your vision, your mission, of course, is important. The big picture idea of what you want to become, write that down. So you put that before you. And you can always make reference to that. Then you can also talk about your, your, your unique selling proposition. What makes you different? What stands you out from the competition? What makes, what makes people fall in love with you? What's that mm. thing? What's your sweet spot? Do you understand? Mm. You need to know it. You need to capitalize on that sweet spot. You get You need to write all yes. of those things down. Who are your customers? Who's your ideal client? Who's the person that you're trying to sell to? Yes. Because you need to be attracted to ideal clients yourself. So you need to be able to describe that ideal client that you want to always attract to buy your product or service. Mm. Once you have that, you must also identify your, your, your competitors. Not yes. because you want to copy them, but you want to be able to maximize your own edge over them. What don't they have that you can do better than them at all? And you deliver that sent it to your client. So we're talking about managing, but I'm using that blueprint to explain the different things that you need to know about running a business. Attract the right audience and also know your competitors because you want to be able to outdo your competitors, all right? You're not okay. copying them. You just use it as a, as a stepping stone to ensure that you're able to deliver consistent value to your clients, all right? Okay. Great. Yes. Now, what is, you know, um, what's that word now? Marketing. Marketing, Marketing is Marketing is very important because if you're not marketing, it's like a, lay, a guy winking in the dark to a lady. She will never see him. That's what marketing is. Imagine a guy is trying to talk to this and he's in the dark and the guy is not seeing him. How will that happen? Yeah, it's not like not possible. Possible. Do you understand what I'm saying? So marketing means you keep on putting out those products or offerings in the front of your ideal client. You need to keep on doing it, whether organically or whether paid. Okay. Now, of course, we all know that Organic, organic, organic reach is slower, but you always start with that. I don't always advise that business owners start with age. Start organically. Let the people around you, in your circle of influence, know what you do. Put it on your social media handles, on your WhatsApp status, wherever you can share it. Oh, I'm into this, so would you be interested? And you can offer them what I call a lead magnet. What did I just say right now? A lead magnet, which is a freebie, which can attract them. You can give them like a free giveaway. I say, oh, if you want to buy from me, I'm going to give you this challenge. Refer your friend who buys from us, and you get this at 50% off. I'm telling you, people will run. People will run. I'll repeat that again. I know that I just said that in a, in a hurry. I'm talking about give people a lead magnet for them to engage with you. The okay. best of clients, give them a lead magnet. Give them a gift. Tell them, look, if you, if you, refer, your, if you refer your friends to me and they purchase from me, you either get this free or 50% off. People will run risks to get their friends to buy from you. That's just a nugget I just dropped in there. Try it out. It works all the time. It works all the time. When you give out a lead magnet, people are drawn to it and they begin to purchase from you. And then they will tell their friends. They naturally become your evangelist. And they begin to tell others and they will come. What about the evangelism? You start sharing the good news. They begin to share the good news of your products and services. That's how it is. When you're able to deliver the right to satisfy your customers, you get them sharing the good news of your work with their people. Okay. Testing, test, test, warning before you start your business. Before you go, hello. Hello. 
Can you hear me, ma? Hello, yes. So I think you went off for a, a few minutes. I don't know whether you went off or whether I was the one that went off. I was not I was <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> At least we're back. Thankfully, yeah. <laughs> I can see the heart. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, it's network. It's how network can behave. Yeah, you know? network. <laughs> oh, okay, well. So, um, okay, so we've talked about you. The last place I heard was when you were talking about organic marketing and telling your friends, telling your neighbors, telling people on WhatsApp, you know, telling, just telling people that are around you, that's where you start with, before you go into um, marketing, yes. paid marketing. Yes. So, that's yeah, paid, paid marketing is the next step. Paid marketing is actually the next step, and then you can actually use Facebook Ads Manager, you know, inside okay. the Facebook Ads Manager to actually run ads and target your audience. Now, when, I, when people say they just boost the post, you can start with boosting a post. You can start with promoting a post. Mm -hmm. That will help you. Mm -hmm. Now? I can hear you. Yes, ma'am. All right. I'm not sure what happened again. <laughs> it just it maybe the rain, you know, it's raining a lot today. It's probably the rain. You know, it's not just only about the paid advertising, not only about boosting a post, it's not only about promoting a post. It has mm -hmm. to do with actually doing it right. Going in the back end of Facebook Ads Manager to actually target your rights and I Oh, this network. <laughs> Okay, so we're talking about marketing. If you want to carry out that Okay, so and let me just wrap that up and say that paid advertising has to do with Wow. Okay. Let's see how that goes. <clears throat> Okay. Oh, wow. We're still on marketing, Sha. We're still talking about marketing, organic marketing for starting the business as it grows. Okay. Yes. So, just to wrap this up, paid advertisement has to do with going in the back end of Facebook Ads Manager and, I, and, and um, you know, uh, targeting your right audience, targeting the right people that are in different locations and different, their different behaviors and spending behaviors and, you know, wherever they are using the right demographic to target the right people and then you will get your responses, not just only boosting or promoting. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for that. Okay, so I've heard a lot of time that talent can take you, you know, to high places with the, the dreams you have, the the business you have, you know, can take you, your talent can take you to high places, can take you very far, but it's your character that keeps you there. So in growing a business, you know, in growing a business that, that will last, that would last, stand the test of time and that, you know, would, would keep customers coming back, what are some of the character traits that entrepreneurs need to imbibe in themselves, need to build in themselves so that their business can, you know, go far and time can keep coming back? Is that Wow, thank you so much. That's a very, very awesome question. I love that first analogy that, yes, your abilities, your potential can take you far, but your character will keep you there. I totally agree because there's so many things that, you, as, a, as, as, a, as, an, as an entrepreneur, as an entrepreneur, there's so many things you need to have within you. And my all-time favorite is that you must always have a positive perspective to life. Not always, because you will come across challenges that may want to tell you stop, that may yes. want to shatter your dreams. But when you see the cup or the tumbler or the, or the bowl half full, and you see that it's, there's a whole lot in front of you, that this is just like a stepping stone to your point of greatness, you will keep on mm. going. You mm. will keep on going because time of discouragement will come. I'm telling you, 
I'm telling you that I've had times of discouragement, but I had to pick up myself and tell myself, you know, because my husband and I, we run business together, you know, and then we have to tell ourselves, look, we are in this for the long haul. We are in this for the long haul. Situations and circumstances where we have to deal with them squarely. Now, I must tell people that as a child of God, as a child of God, there's something you cannot do. Because righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to me. You know, most times you see a lot of all these people say, wow, they're doing well. But you don't know what goes on behind. Yeah. You don't know, you don't know the kind of rock that goes on behind. But yeah. you as a child of God, you need to stand your ground. That look, I'm only going to do what is right in the sight of God. It may take a longer time. People may try to victimize you, but stand your test of time. Stand with mm-hmm. God. Stand right there because he will exalt you. Okay. Do what is right. That's my second thing. The first thing, have a positive attitude to life. Make sure you always fill the cup half, half full. Never act empty. Never be pessimistic. Always be optimistic that it's going to be great. All right? Even if you're going through a dark tunnel, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Always tell yourself that no matter what I'm talking to right now, I'm going to get to the point of light. I don't care whatever I'm talking to. I'm going to get to the point of light. Always tell yourself. The number two thing that this is righteousness with righteousness because it pays mm. it pays it mm. Mm. pays in the long run mm. it pays because you are living a legacy my husband and I did a business with federal government and I'm not joking they didn't pay for over a year and we're talking about hundreds of we're talking about millions oh. yes but we had to stand our ground we took time my husband and I we fasted my husband fasted for like over 300 days <laughs> <laughs> Over 300 days. I don't think one I can do, but my husband, you know, my husband is a prayer worker now. And we are standing in the way. But well, God helped mm. us to conquer. But yeah. one thing that all the I made, and it was in, in Abuja, all the trips I made, I'm sharing it as a personal testimony. People offered me all sorts of things, but I decided I would not allow it. People shaking your hands and telling you things, come and do this, come and. I said, no, I wouldn't do that. If it means for me to walk out of this transaction, I will walk out of it and leave all the money. But I thank God that God showed up, you know. God showed up. God showed up. God showed up. And at the end, all they could say was to testify that men, you are a good woman. Mm. And that mm. is the glory of God. Because yeah. see, it's not written on the forehead. If I did anything wrong, would anybody know? Nobody will know now. But you are can decide, I want to stand my ground. I want to be truthful. I want to be holy. I want to be righteous in this transaction. And God will honor that. It may take time. It may take yeah. time. But in the end, it will happen. <laughs> all right. So of course, all of these things, I mean, you, you, don't, you, have to, you have to be diligent, of course. You have to be diligent. See, see as thou a man that stands before, you know, that is diligent in his work. He will stand before kings and not mean men now. Yeah. The Bible has already said, you have to be diligent. You have to, be, you have to burn the midnight candle. You need to go the extra mile. You need to be tenacious. You need mm. to be ready to work on your hand. Because look, entrepreneurship is not for the daily livered. It's not for the lily livered. If you are lily livered, please go and stay in state employment where you know that you are starting of your second make one pay. But I tell you in the long run, entrepreneurship is the best. Yeah. Now, there are two different types of people in the world. We have entrepreneurs and we have intrapreneurs. We have mm-hmm. entrepreneurs and we have intrapreneurs. The same thing that mm-hmm. combines the two of them is that we both have entrepreneurial mindset. But an entrepreneur does this for business. He's own or her own business. But an entrepreneur does it for a company. So you must always have an entrepreneurial mindset, no matter what. But if you're not ready and set for the uncertainty or the rock and rolling or the roller coaster or the <laughs> of entrepreneurship, stay in bed and Yeah. You get it? Yeah. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. Stay here. To go out. Now, I'm not trying to make you scared. But I'm telling you that it is truthful. I'm telling you the truth from the depth of my heart. There will be times of discouragement. But you need to know that this is what God has called you. I, mean, I tell people, look, when you are in entrepreneurship and you have decided to burn the bridges, you have died that death. Hmm. You have died the death of, you know, you can't go back. That. Hmm. You say, you say, I ain't going back. So if I'm not going back, I must make this work. So if I must make it work, hmm. I must follow the bigger principle to make it work. Hmm. Um, by a Bible principle, Business principles and human personality, you know, uh, human uh, relationship principles also to so make sure it works. 
And so my final point, so my final point of that is that get knowledge, get wisdom, get training about how to run business. If you've never done a business class before, there are many online. I would always suggest that I went to Faith Foundation, I went to Lagos Business School. You may not have the money to do all of those, but if you check for good business schools online, I'm sure you will see free classes that you will take. I mean, the pandemic has helped a lot of people. People have given up their courses for free. You understand? So yeah. learn. Learn what it is that you need to, to run a business profitably well. Profitably yeah. well. It has to do with so many things. But running a business is not just one thing. There are so many things that is within the space of running business. All right? Yeah. And if you want to learn about pricing, whether well, about how to price your products well or it's more profitable. I have three classes on my page. You can go there and see. Oh. I, have, I can't tell you how many that I give to people that you can see free training on pricing, free training on how to run business. I do that. I do that. Love. That's part of my passion project. I do that. I teach people how to do that. You can see. I also teach people for, for a payment. So if you want to learn, there are also payment <laughs> classes. What if you want to do that? I have three ones there. Many of it. Okay, All right. Okay, well, that's great. I want to ask also that in your business, you know, you have, you have personal values as a human being. In your business now, should those um, values reflect like now, if you're somebody, let's say you're in the fashion industry, and you're someone that naturally doesn't like to, you know, show cleavage, you know, do all those things, should your business also have carried those same values that you carry as a person? Or, you know, you might be a Christian, you might be somebody that doesn't like to show all of that, but because that's what's selling around you, you might want to go into it. So do, is there a place where your personal values, your values as a Christian, like intersect with your business values? Thank you so much. Yes, yes, and yes. You're, you're one and the same person. Hmm. I have interacted with um, business owners who yes. don't believe, who believe that business is separate from their spirituality. I've interacted with them, but I tell people that my business and myself, we are one. Mm. That's why you call it integrity. Being in uniformity, my values as a person must reflect in my values as a Christian, as a business owner. That's, okay. the way, that's my stance. So let me give you an example. I mean, years ago, I mean, you know, my, I, my, my first love, let me use the word, my first love is fashion design, you know? Oh. So... I'm, I'm many things now. There are many things that have evolved, you know. I've evolved into so many things right now. But my first love, which is fashion design, which earned me the title of the best designer, you know, in 2005. You get which when yeah. we ran, when we went on the runway. So a lot of people say, well, should a Christian take part in worldly competition? You know, I use that in quotes. In worldly competition, I took part in that competition because I wanted to show the glory of God, and mm. I saw. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, great. So we decided to come up with designs that will not show cleavage, that will not show stomach, that will not be provocative. But we came up, we used, I mean, God gave us wisdom. Hmm. In the five different categories, we came up with, you know, things that have to do with nature. So oh. for the bridal, yes, for the bridal category, we called that particular segment, we called it tarantula. Tarantula is a, is a, is a spider. Yeah, so yeah. we came up with a case of beauty. I mean, nobody likes spiders. But we <laughs> used the web, a design. Do you understand my point? To create the design of the work, it was very constructive. Like I think you were building a house. So we created the design using tarantula, using the spider web as a concept. We mm. had, you know, for the swimwear, because we knew we were not going to win that category of the swimwear because we will not show cleavage, we will not show anything. But we used, you know, See the sea animals like octopus to create mm. the concept and we, we, we dress well. We didn't win that category. I knew we weren't going to win it. You know, for the evening wear, we came up with things like the butterfly concept, the crocodile concept. We did all of these things and we came out the winner. Oh, but thankfully, we came out the winner. We came out the winner because the reason why we came out the winner was the day before or the, mm. that same day, on the, on the day of the event, we had all the 
uh, panelists or the, the judges come around and check our work. And flat, four flat, I was the winner because they saw all the work that we did. They looked inside, they looked outside. And at that point, all that was left was just what, the runway. Yeah. Now, the truth of the matter had already won in the morning already. So at the, on the evening, it was, I won four categories out of six. Four categories. And I did not believe it. I did not do anything. I was provocating. I did not do anything. And I was standing there giving God all the praise. All right? Mm. Now, that was mm. that's one way of saying that you can set your values, the thing in what you do. Now, mm. I'm, like I said, I'm working in digital marketing, business automation, and also many other things. Even with that, even when I run ads and I do all of what I'm doing, I still infuse my Christian beliefs, my Christian values in whatever I'm doing. I share with okay. them. I let them know that look at what you're calling with. This is what you're rocking with. If a child of God, though, and will not do anything that is not, you know, if you are not ready. Someone came to ask me. They wanted to make a dress, a wedding dress, and they wanted to show me, but I said, I'm sorry, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't hmm. do it. I'm sorry. I would give you a of what you can do to look glamorous, to look beautiful, without doing that. Because you can actually be beautiful without showing cleavage. You don't yeah. have to show it to the world. You don't have to bear it all, you know, to be beautiful. You yeah. have what it takes. You have, your, you have your glory. God is already clad you with glory. So why do you want to do that? And I tell people, you, you can't find gold all over the street. You have to dig deep for gold. So if you are digging mm. deep, why are they now? Why are you giving your body as public offering to the whole world? Come on. Come on. Yeah. Don't give your body, body as public offering. Let people dig deep and find the real you. Mm. Anyway, of course, I agree. Mm. Let your Christian beliefs and your values be seen in your business. Okay, ma. Thank you very much for that. Okay, so now the next question. How do you advise a person, a teenager, that doesn't really have many resources at their disposal to start a business? Like, you know, many things, the way, this, everything that is happening, a lot of people do not have access to a lot of resources. So how do you, how do you yeah. advise somebody that doesn't have so much to start a business? Wow. You need to be creative. Mm. You need to be creative. Think about what, look, before the advent of money, people were, people were doing things, right? Yeah. People were, there was a trade by barter system. Money is just a means of exchange. So you need to be creative. You need to be creative. Look for other creative ways. Of, let me give you an example of myself. I mean, this is about me, Shay, or my family. I, I always like to be very, very upfront and open. When I was young, like I'm talking about six years, I started with, I started with zero naira. I like to tell people I started with zero naira. Zero, do. There was zero naira without having money. Yes, in my father's house, and as early as seven years old, I would go to a t-shirt dump, a, a garbage dump where they had of course, and I used to make baby doll clothes. Oh. I used to pick up at, at the tender age of seven. I used to do that, and mind you, I'm a product of a broken home. That means my mom left when I was six years old, so I didn't have any reason to be happy. But I mm -hmm. decided to like be creative. Went to a garment dump. Picked up materials and started making baby doll clothes. In fact, let me share with you a touching story. A touching story that touched the heart. Let me share it with you. When we were much younger, <laughs> yeah, so you, you don't have to start with money. Look, you don't have to start with money. Start with what you have. Mm -hmm. Start with what you have in the place where you are, on the way to where you're going. All right? I just explained to you earlier, before I tell you this touching story, that okay. put pictures of what you're selling on your page. If you feel that you can sell, you can have your supplier. Put the pictures out there first. When people make an order, you can get from your supplier. You don't, you, you didn't use money to buy that. You didn't mm. use money. Mm. You use the images. You get images of these pictures. When someone has paid you, you go get the product and supply. Mm. Is that, you didn't have to buy it. You didn't have to stock it. No. Do you understand? So let me tell you this certain story. Let me tell you that life is in stages and in phases. So when we were young in marriage, my husband and I, maybe like first or second year in marriage, you know, I, 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 was, I was doing millinery as in hat making. I tell you, I've done a lot of businesses in my life, you know. <laughs> I was doing hat making business. So there was this pastor, the pastor of our church at that point, you know, wanted to travel abroad to the UK to go and help us sell, you know, some of our, our products. He was going to tell me, I had to create come up with products, like maybe about 10 of hats, different kind of hats. I didn't have the money to buy the materials. So, and this pastor wanted to help me now to yeah. make money. But I didn't have the, didn't have the capital. So do you know what my husband did? Hmm. My husband
Solomon went to Timske where they sell all those materials. He didn't tell me, oh, he went there and he took all his certificates. All his certificates that he earned from university and from his polytechnic certificates and went there and told this woman that, look, my, my wife wants to make her. I would deposit this certificate. This when she has sold them and they get the money, I will come back and pay you. Wow. Imagine. Wow. He was going to risk his certificate. Wow. Do you know what happened? The woman who was a veteran understood this thing. Even though her daughter was warning her against it, ah, this person may be a scam, oh, this is a scam. She said, no, give him all the materials he needs. And do you know what she said? Take your certificates away. When you get the money, come up. Oh. Can you just imagine that? As I'm talking, I'm having good simple that I'm talking right now. Because it's a story that is in my heart. I'm telling you. So we didn't have the money. He brought all the materials, everything. And the thing I know how, I went back, I went to collect. Hmm. When our pastor from Cool Town, hey, hey, he sold it from Cool Town. Oh, I was okay. the first time we paid in town. And of course, you know the end. We went back, paid the woman, appreciated her. Oh. You, you don't have money? No. We took our certificate to go and what? Barter for this material. But we didn't have money. We didn't have money to start. We didn't have money to do it. But we were able to creatively come up with what we can do to be able to do that. Um, well, Don't mind I'm, me. I'm, yes, but I'm telling you this because it's a very important historical analysis of my business. You know what I'm saying? Long time ago. <laughs> 18 years ago. 18 years wow. ago. Yeah. Wow. That's wonderful. That's your wonderful <laughs> Nobody has any excuse. You don't have any excuse not to start. You don't have any, no excuse. Look, in the real sense of it, what do you do now? Get suppliers. Talk with them. If you're selling products and service, get suppliers. Get their images and put it on there. People will buy. When they pay you, maybe deposit, you order and you, and you pay. Simple. And if you can get a loan, you can get a loan. Maybe you can talk to friends and family and write a business plan. You know I was talking about business plan earlier. Write yes, them yes. a document, a one page document that I desire a loan of maybe 10,000 or 15,000 to do this business. Look, let me give you another example. Mm -hmm. My daughter, when she was in secondary school, now she's in university now. When she was in secondary school, I think she was in um, SS1 or SS2, she wrote my husband a letter that I want to borrow. So I saw I think it was like. 2,000 or 3,000, something like that. I want to borrow it. I want to see that people were going to buy this from her in school. So she needed more capital to what? To continue that business. And my husband told her, I'm giving you this as a 50, uh, I think it was 20% um, return on investment or something like that. It was a business transaction. Mm. We teach our children business. It's not a, it's not a game. Yeah. And if she did back, she paid back with that with that interest rate. She paid back. She did that business, made money in secondary school and paid back what she borrowed with the interest. Rate. So what mm. are we talking about? You can do it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's absolutely true. <laughs> okay, so um I've heard a lot of Christian things. Um, that people of the world succeed at business, but you know, Christians, they don't succeed because maybe they don't want to cut corners or I don't know. I've, I've just heard it a lot of times, like I've heard it a lot of times that Christians do not succeed at business, but people of the world do. Mm -hmm. do. Like, how true is this? How, how true is this? <laughs> Thanks so much for this question. Hmm. Even Jesus said so, that, uh, that the children of this generation, they are wiser. They are wiser than the children of, of, of God. Even mm. Jesus said that. Yes. Mm. But you see, in their wisdom, there's crookedness in their wisdom. Mm. All right? There's crookedness in the wisdom of the world. So I told you, I mean, I, I told you earlier that you need to stick with righteousness. Yes. It will be a longer...
when you take that route, it will pay in the long run, right? It will pay in the long run. It will pay in the long run. So stick with righteousness. There are, there are many things that a lot of business people do. I, I've had opportunity to be in places where I hear a lot of things. And I'm like, it, I, I, I cringe. Like, wow. Mm. A lot of things that go on in high places. You can't do it. You can't. But I tell people that when you start, you know that you're on a journey. And this journey, you're on this journey with God. You're on this journey with God to excellence. So you put all your, everything in place. You do all that you're supposed to do. Make sure that you're running business right. And also add the God factor. Mm -hmm. If that business you are seeking for is not going to bring out God's glory, please check out of it. Leave mm -hmm. it. Mm. Leave it. No, leave it. Leave no. it. It's better that we gain the kingdom of God than we gain the whole wide world. It is mm. better that we find the right legacy that people can point to and say this was a truly a child of God doing business. It's mm. always better. People have to give up a whole lot. Please give it up. Mm. That aside, Christians. I mean, one of my one of my um, mentors. Distance mentors, even though I've, I've requested for mentors, mentoring <laughs> in her site, you know, but it's Ibukwa Oshita. Ibukwa Oshita, oh. you know. Yeah. And I love her story, how she started, you know, her furniture company from the time when she was in, um, after NYSC, and then she actually went to serve, you know, and then uh, with people, she started her business, started her corporation. Right now, she's the chairman of Fed Bank, on, of their board, mm. because she, and she's a pastor. All right? She is a what? The pastor of Fountain of Life. She was one of the pastors of Fountain of Life. And she does business right. She holds, you know, seminars for women, for people about how to run business. Now, she's a child of God and she's excellent in business. All right? You get my point. I know that another yes, one, Nika, 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 Nika is another one of my distant mentors. All right? Rough and tumble. Rough and tumble. She, she, she's a believer. Do you understand? And she is excelling. Who tells you that people can't excel in business? The most important thing is that God factor must be held true. Mm. The God factor is very important. Please mm. do not ever jeopardize your relationship for money. Your mm. relationship with God, never jeopardize it with. If you have to give it up, if you have to, to if you have to, um, what's that word now? If you have to, um, what's it called now? Oh, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. If you have to give up something for the kingdom of God, please give it up. Mm. Give it up. Give it up. Give it up. Do you understand? And stand with Christ. It is the of entrepreneurship. And it will surely pay off. Okay, Ma. Thank you very much, Ma. Okay, so there is one last question before we round off. And how can, I, somebody asked me, how can business owners Separate personal assets and funds from business funds and assets. <laughs> okay, I think I touched on this earlier. I think I touched on this earlier um, that we need to obey the entity concept. Yeah. Create an entity for your business. Mm -hmm. Let your business, even if you have a chain of businesses, let each one have a life of its own. Okay. When you have, yes, let each one have a life of its own. You are able to do that when you have created it as a business, you've registered it. It doesn't mean you have to register it as a limited liability company. Do you understand? When I say, when we say House of Henry, we, we register it as a business name for years. All right? We did business with that, that, the federal government because we were still doing all the things that the limited liability was supposed to do. We had audited accounts. We had all of those things. And we were still doing. But later on, I think it was in 2010, that we now registered it as a limited liability company. Mm -hmm. Are you yes. All those years, all those years, it was a business name. You can always transit from it being, it being a business name to it being a limited liability company. All right. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is that make sure it has a life of its own. Create a business account for it. After you have gotten your, uh, you can't open a business account for it except you have created a business name out of it, all right? So when you have done that, go to the bank, get, a, get, get an account, get an account, and then tell your customers, 
to always stay into your account. Mm. In that way, you can track. And another thing is that as a business owner, pay yourself a salary. I know that's very hard. It's very, very hard. It's very, very hard to do. Pay yourself a, a salary or at least an allowance. If you cannot afford your salary now, later on when your business makes money, you can always collect that back end, all right, later on. But know that pay yourself an allowance or a salary or something that just keeps you moving, all right? But let okay. it be consistent. If it's not consistent, make sure that you document it. Now, okay. when you're doing that, to, to move out from being joined to just your business as you. Because if we're looking at the different forms of business, we have sole proprietorship, we have limited liability, we have partnership. So as a sole proprietorship, because people start out like that, but that doesn't mean you always have a mindset of a sole proprietorship. Have a mindset of a limited liability when you are even doing your business name. Ensure that you do proper accounts. If you cannot get an accountant, get someone that can do your accounts probably yearly. Make sure that you keep a journal. I tell people when it comes to um, documenting your expenses and finances, it's very, very important that you have a book that you can journal your expenses and your income. Okay. So let me give us an assignment on that. If there are people here who are not journaling their accounts, please get a book. Let me see if I can get a book here. When you, when you have, okay, I have a book by my side. So this is a book. When you get a book, all right, any book you get, make sure that when you open it, I think this is, this is my son's book. <laughs> when you open it, the first page, when the, the first page, read it out. Then this second page, right? This second page. Now, you would write income, income, hmm. 20, or income, then month and the, the year, all right? Then on the yeah. second page, you would write expenses, the month and the year, okay? Hmm. Then you yeah. start putting in the income side, ensure that you make, you write it very descriptive, all right? Very descriptive. You put the name of the person, how much they pay, and for what purpose, the okay. date. Then for the expenses, always do the same thing. Everything mm -hmm. that you are spending, make sure you write it down. The name, mm -hmm. the, the date, the and for what purpose. Now, at the, you keep on doing that. Now, you find out that the income, the expense side, naturally fills up faster than the income side. Most times it happens that way. You open up the next page, all right, and you continue on that expense side. Okay. Don't mix up the income and your expenses together. Okay. It doesn't give clarity. At the end of the month, at the end of the month, you will add up all your income, add up all your expenses, and do the math. Then tell me whether you made what a profit or a loss. Our prayer is that we always keep on making what profit. Okay, ma'am. So that was so, a little exercise that we did here. So we have 28 seconds remaining. So <laughs> how many seconds? 28 seconds. How many seconds? Oh, let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> it was great to have you here, ma. Thank you very much for your time. We learned a lot from you. God bless you, ma. Oh, my God bless you too. I really had a fun time. Mwah.